Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. Peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, affects more than 8 million people in the United States. Dr. Marie Moyes, a vascular surgeon at Metro Health Medical System, will tell us more about this disease, and then we'll hear from attorney Patricia Smith. She'll tell us about social media and how it affects your business. Later in the broadcast after that, Kristen Warzoka will update us on the services provided by the Cleveland Food Bank. Good morning. It is a good morning indeed. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. As we begin, we begin with Dr. Murray Moyes, a vascular surgeon at the Metro Health Medical Systems. Good to have you with us, Dr. Moyes. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Good to have you here. You're here to talk about something called peripheral arterial disease, or PAD. What is that? Peripheral arterial disease, PAD, affects, is a condition that affects the large blood vessels in your body. Um, outside of your heart and your brain. So it affects the blood vessels that go down to your legs, to mm -hmm. your arms, um, and that feeds your brain. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms? How do, how do we see it manifest itself? Well, peripheral arterial disease is uh, mediated by atherosclerosis, which is basically hardening of the arteries that can lead to narrowing of the arteries or blockages. Mm -hmm. So what that ultimately leads to is, in the lower extremities is pain with walking. Yeah, now we, we, many of us are familiar with that phrase, hardening of the arteries. Correct. We, I've heard that ever since I was a little boy. The older folks in my family were always talking about hardening of the arteries. What happens when, when the arteries do that? So when the arteries get hardened, they, they start to narrow and eventually they com completely up obstruct. Mm -hmm. And so that prevents blood flow from getting down to your legs or to your arms. And what happens is you, you're walking, your muscles are asking for more oxygen, more blood from your heart. Your heart starts to pump, but the blood can't get past those blockages or those narrowings. And so you develop pain cramping in the legs, uh, usually after a short distance. When you stop to rest, your muscles uh, don't need the blood and oxygen, the pain goes away, uh -huh. but then recurs again, that usually about the same distance. Can we lose those, uh, lose those limbs if we, don't, if we don't treat this? Right, if, uh, if you uh, don't work to modify the risk factors that cause atherosclerosis to start in the, to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, the symptoms can progress and it can lead to amputations uh -huh. or it can lead to non-healing wounds. You deal with this on a daily basis as a vascular uh, surgeon at, at Metro, Health, Metro Health Medical Center. Correct. Yeah. I see patients uh, uh, who come in with pain with walking, and it prevents them from going to the grocery stores. It prevents them from working. I also see people with uh, sores on their feet that are not healing after two, three weeks. Uh -huh. Okay. Now the $64,000 question, what can we do? to prevent this or to treat this? Well, prevention is key. Um, you want to uh, modify the risk factors that cause it, one, to prevent it, and also two, to prevent it from getting worse. Uh, one of the key things is to stop smoking. Uh, we hear a lot about smoking, how it affects the lungs, but uh, smoking is toxic to the blood vessels as well. While we're on that subject of smoking, nothing good comes from smoking, does it? No, nothing good. I mean, we people used to think they looked cool smoking. No, no, and we're not advertising the cigarette cool. But they used to think they looked cool, but you didn't even look cool. No, yeah. no, the smoking can only do it leads to um, cancers, uh, lung disease, peripheral arterial yeah. disease. So. What does what does tobacco what does tobacco smoke do? to the arteries in our systems. It actually does the same thing that high cholesterol does. It actually causes um, the plaque buildup mm -hmm. within the arteries, which causes them to harden, to get, become stiffer, and to eventually narrow and to block. Yeah. So what is your suggestions? What do you tell your parents when they, when they come in and they see you and, uh, you, uh, and they, you talk about lifestyle changes? Where do you begin with lifestyle changes? So to prevent peripheral arterial disease, or if you have it, to prevent it from getting worse, um, stop smoking, uh, control your diabetes, Keep your uh, blood sugar in the 100 range. Mm -hmm. um, controlled blood pressure. We're looking for a goal blood pressure of 120s to 80s. Mm -hmm. And also to exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise helps to um, keep the blood flowing and also helps to um, keep your arteries more compliant, less stiff. You tell young people to begin exercising at a young age? Always. And continue to do that on, on, on through life? If you exercise in your 20s and your 30s and continue, that will help you in your 70s, 80s, 90s? Right. Uh, exercising also helps to, another key component of preventing uh, peripheral arterial disease, atherosclerosis, is to uh, maintain your blood, I'm uh -huh. sorry, your cholesterol. Yeah. So, so the exercise folks, works to do so, that. So the people you, you explain, this, some of these people are at higher risks because of, of lifestyles. When, when, when we talk about lifestyles, how, how do we get people 
to change the lifestyle. What do you tell people who say, well, I've been smoking this long and it's so hard to quit, or I've never exercised before, but now I've got a weight problem and I've got the uh, PAD, uh, our, our peripheral arterial disease. What do you tell them? I tell them to think about uh, the, uh, the activities that they like to like to do. Uh, one thing people always like to remain independent, mm -hmm. and I tell them that if you have uh, limits in your walking, or you have a wound in your leg that, that makes it painful to walk, uh, it limits your independence. I also tell people to focus on the people in their life. I said, don't you want to be there for your grandkids, for your children? Um, you know, isn't being there for your family and be keeping independent more important than that cigarette? Mm -hmm. You and I were chatting before we started doing the broadcast and you told me that you've wanted to be a medical doctor ever since you were four years old, I yeah. think. What mm -hmm. was it about medicine that intrigued you at that early age and what keeps you in medicine? Well, yeah, I have a number of family members in medicine uh, and um, uh, I was inspired by them. And what keeps me is people that I work with every day. I love to tell people how to live healthier lives. Mm -hmm. And people are receptive to it. They want, they want to be healthier. They want to feel good. They want to continue to have energy. And I love to be able to tell people how to do that. That would be your bottom line, too. That, that would be the thought that you would leave us with, is about li living a healthy life all the way through and, and staying away from things that are bad for us, like tobacco and, and too much drink and all of that kind of right. thing. And right. With, um, and with, uh, particularly with respect to peripheral arterial disease, um, uh, it, one, it confers a higher risk of developing a stroke or a heart attack. Yeah. Uh, so that's one important thing to keep in check. And two, it limits your lifestyle in terms of wounds and, uh, and also the pain of walking. Dr. Marie Moyes is a medical doctor, vascular surgeon at Metro Health with the Metro Health System. And you can get more information on everything we're talking about if you make a, a contact to the website you see on the bottom of the screen, which is metrohealth.org, metrohealth.org. Thanks, Dr. Moyes, for being in the broadcast today. Thank you very much today. for having me. I enjoyed talking with you, and let's hope that we can get some people to live healthier lifestyles and turn the corner on peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, as it is sometimes called. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to take a break in just a moment. Coming up, we're going to talk about social media and how it impacts and affects your business. I'm Leon Bibb. We call ourselves Kaleidoscope. Back shortly. Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. Good to have you with me today. Social media has become a major part of our daily lives. Attorney Patricia Smith of Frasina and Smith, the law firm, will explain how social media can affect your business. Good to have you with us, Patricia Smith. Thank you for having me, Leon. We just had the doctor in the house, now the attorney is in the house. <laughs> yes. I guess we're well covered. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Let's chat a little bit about social media. I mean, and for those who may not understand, bring us up to speed on on what on what you call social media. Social media is a wonderful platform that businesses as well as individuals can use to actually monitor and, and actually have control over their business and how they build their reputation in the community. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to businesses, it's a great tool to use in order to market and advertise yeah. your service or to recruit employees. And it, overall, just to share information with each other. So again, social media is a wonderful platform that, that individuals as well as, com as companies have been using. Uh, in, in the United States and abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear the phrase, we hear the name Facebook yes. all the time. I'm Very on possibly. Facebook. Uh, much of the world is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Leon Bibb, W E W S. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's me uh, with the company right, right here. Uh, and, and we use it to put different things that, that I may be doing. My mm -hmm. stories for the newscast, they, they are put on Facebook and, right. and, and that kind of thing. But we're seeing an increased use of Facebook in business. Speak to that a little bit. It's actually important for businesses to have a presence and to utilize social media networks in order to get their name out there, in order to get their products and services out there, in order to engage their customers, in order to engage vendors. Um, it's a great way for them to control how their business is, is being viewed in the public. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Christine and Smith wants businesses to understand that it's important to have a solid social media policy in place uh, because there's several laws, uh, particularly uh, that can be violated, um, and there's several risks that companies face uh, with, respe with respect to intellectual property issues, uh, invasion of privacy issues, mm -hmm. even anti-discrimination 
issues can come up with respect to the how social media is used in the workplace. Give me an example of uh, some of those risks that we should be aware of as we log on to Facebook. Right. Well, one important risk I'm going to talk about would be intellectual property law. Mm -hmm. um, intellectual property can include copyrights or, or trademarks. So companies need to be uh, basically understand that if they have employees who are going out uh, using another person's copyrighted material, that they could be uh, liable for copyright infringement. Uh, if an employee or if a marketing representative for that organization is going out and they're using another company's trademark uh, on the company's website, and there could be some issues of trademark infringement, as well as putting it out there in the public that there may be some type of endorsement, sponsorship, yeah. or affiliation with that other company. We hear people all the time saying, I just read it on Facebook, I just put it on right. Facebook. That stuff is out there forever, isn't it? Absolutely. Sharing information, once you put information out there, it's very hard to retrieve it and, and to get it back. However, for companies, if they have solid social media policies in place, the one thing that we advise our clients to do is to put together a team of individuals, uh, ranging from marketing, from legal, from PR, as well as HR, mm -hmm. and have a designated group to yeah. control the subject matter uh, that is being put on social media, have a team. Uh, with respect to your employees, again, have policies in place that basically state what you can and cannot do with respect to ut utilizing social media. Now, certainly my Facebook page here at WWS Television, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's run by the, by, by the company. I right. mean, it's got my Absolutely. name on it, so I have to be aware that whatever I put out there has got my company's name on there, so I've got to be very careful Absolutely. the things I talk about, the things I say, Absolutely. the pictures I put on there. Absolutely because you are an extension of your company. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, companies need to understand that just having a social media policy isn't enough. Uh, companies need to make sure that their social media policies are within the confines of law. Uh, again, uh, some companies may want to use social media as a way to recruit employees. Well, that's permissible. That's fine. And it's a wonderful tool to use. However, when an employer is in a position where they're utilizing social media in order to make a decision about in a, pr a prospective employee based on race, religion, gender, yeah ethnicity, then of course that's a problem and that's a violation of law. So it's really important for employers to understand the proper use uh, of social media and having a plan of action in place and communicating that to their employees and also having training and education workshops available so that they can reinforce the policies and procedures within the organization. I'm going to continue talking with you, but I want to put your phone number on the screen right now. People may want to get more information. Certainly yeah. companies, you're, you're available, your company is available to school companies on Absolutely. social media. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our demographic would include small to mid-sized businesses, universities, uh, business incubators, mm -hmm. uh, as well as startups. So again, we definitely can help company uh, put together a social media package as well as governance models. 330-777-0063 is the phone number for uh, uh, Frasina and Smith. Yes. We can, they can reach you at Frasina and Smith. At, or you can go to IP Corplaw I-P-C-O-R-P-L-A-W dot com. Yes. More information on everything we're talking about. Where are you located geographically? We have offices in Stowe, Ohio, and we also have a satellite office in Akron, Ohio as well. Yeah. And we serve as legal counsel for uh, a beta space uh, yeah. in Cleveland. Uh -huh. What's the best piece of advice you could give uh, companies uh, uh, using social media? I've got about 30 seconds remaining. Use social media to your advantage, but make sure that you have policies and procedures in place to protect your company from liability mm -hmm. yeah. and to retain an attorney. Uh, you know, invest the time and money to make sure that you have uh, sound, solid social media uh, policies within, within your organization. And remember that the stuff you put out there is still out there. Yeah, it's it out stays, there. And it, it can be difficult to, to absolutely. Get to, to, once you get the tube, toothpaste out of the tube, you can't get it back in. It's difficult. People share information. They share links. Mm -hmm. It can go on and on and on. So you definitely want to put a tight niche on that. Patricia Smith, attorney with Fresina and Smith at 330-777-0063. I appreciate you being on the broadcast today. Thank you for having me. It was I a pleasure. I feel better. I'm going to be careful what I say on <laughs> social media. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Many thanks. I'll take a break. In a moment, we'll hear from Kristen Wazoka of the Cleveland Food Bank. I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you so much. You're in touch with Kaleidoscope. 
glad to have you aboard today. The Cleveland Food Bank looks and works with our local communities for assistance year-round. Vice President of External Affairs, Kristen Warzoka, is here to explain how you can also help with the Cleveland Food Bank's efforts to help eligible individuals sign up for what's called the SNAP program. And good to have you with us, Kristen Warzoka of the Cleveland Food Bank. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. First off, what's the SNAP program? <laughs> the SNAP program is the new name for food stamps. Um, it's a program that helps income eligible mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. um, pr get access to the food that they need. Yeah. Um, and it's access in the form of a EBT card that mm -hmm. they can use at their yeah. local grocery store. Okay. It's an incredibly important program. And a good program. It is. It's Puts actually food on the table. It's one of the most efficient federal programs. Very few people know that. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, it keeps a lot of families out of poverty yeah. and um, it allow allows families to have access to the kind of food that they will yeah. eat and enjoy. Okay. Well, give us an update on where we are regarding hunger in our area here. And I know the Cleveland Food Bank, how many how many counties do you work in? We provide food to more than 600 programs in a six county service area, all the way east to the Pennsylvania line and yeah. south to Richland County, which oh, is yeah. the Mansfield area. Mansfield area, yeah. yeah. Uh, how big is the hunger problem in our area? Um, unfortunately, it's a problem that's large and that's growing. One in six people in our community is food insecure. That means that they don't always know where their next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, they may not be f food insecure all the time, yeah. but you know, at certain times of the month or at certain times of year when their car breaks down and they, or they have some other sort of emergency, they yeah. just can't make ends yeah. meet. Yeah. How do people get signed up for, for uh, your, your various programs? Uh, in fact, your, 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 your newest program. How do people sign up for this? Well, there are a number of ways that we can help. Um, we are opening a new help center at the Cleveland Food Bank. It's a toll-free number. Mm -hmm. It's 1-855-738-2067, where folks who are in need of food can call for assistance. We can either refer them to a hunger program in their area, or we can help them sign up for benefits they're eligible for, including the SNAP program, over the phone, yeah. so they don't actually have to leave their home to fill out an application yeah. for SNAP and for other benefits. Okay, for the, those are the folks who, who, who need help. Mm -hmm. Now, what about those folks who, are, who, uh, who can help? There are many what ways for people to get involved, many, many ways, and we are thrilled to have wonderful community support. We have more than 10,000 volunteers a year, so people mm -hmm. can come down and volunteer and help repack food. Yeah. Um, we also, of course, are always in need of food donations, and we're in need of financial donations. And the fact is that this summer is a great time to give. We have a summer matching gift challenge campaign happening right now. Normally, when you donate a dollar to the Cleveland Food Bank, it provides enough food for four meals, but right now, if you donate to the Cleveland Food Bank, your dollar will be matched and so it will provide enough food for eight meals. So, so. if I can give if I can give you ten bucks or a hundred bucks or a, or five hundred or a thousand whatever, mm -hmm. that money goes a lot farther than the face value of what I gave you. It, it kind of doubles and absolutely and you guys know all the w ways to even stretch it even farther than that. We can stretch it much farther than you'd be able to stretch it at your local supermarket. Because you, if you, buy, went into, you buy it a certain way or you get that food through certain we channels. Buy food, we have it donated, we sh we ship it in from other other parts of yeah. the country if we can get a great deal. Yeah. Um, we work really hard to uh, stretch that dollar and, and volunteers help a lot. They save us a lot of money each year. Now once we get down to the Thanksgiving season mm -hmm. and uh, certainly the Christmas season, it's on our minds, a lot of minds that we've got to help folks. It's true. But those are two days a year. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to eat 365 days a year. Right. The fact is, hunger is a year-round problem. There's certain times of year when the hunger, when the challenge is even um, more difficult for low-income, working, poor families. Yeah. You know, frankly, back to school is a tough time. There are mm -hmm. a lot of expenses associated with sending your kids back to school. Summer is a tough time yeah. um, for families who are worried about um, making sure their kids have extra meals to eat every yeah. day when they're not getting free and reduced-price school breakfasts and lunches. So um, that need does continue all year long, as you said. And we are so grateful for the, for the community's support. Here in Northeast Ohio, we've got more than a couple of million people potentially watching this broadcast, looking mm -hmm. at you right now. I would love to have everybody watching, but I know some people may be away from the TV. But for those who are watching mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. what can they do to help the Cleveland Food Bank do what it does? They can go to our website to learn more at www.clevelandfoodbank.org to either find out how to get help or to find out how to give help. And the fact is, there's something we can all do to become involved in this problem. And those who may not have computers who need help, they can make a phone call, can't they? Yep, they can call us at that toll-free line, 855-738-2067. Uh, 
738-2067. Yeah, and there's another phone number there which we've got on the, uh, well, I've got on my notes here, 216-738-2265. Uh, yep, and that's our operator. That, that's, that's your operator. So yep. whatever number we call, they, the, somebody will be able to answer that phone and, and get us directed to the office we need to be talking to. Absolutely. I will add that the uh, Cleveland Food Bank is located in a wonderful facility, just a marvelous facility at, on the East Shoreway in Cleveland at East 152nd Street, and it's just a wonderful place. I go there, and you've got food stacked up to the rafters, going out all the time to the various pantries that it needs to get to. Absolutely. Last year, we distributed 29, enough food for 29 million meals. That was mm -hmm. 34 million pounds of food, and so it's a large food distribution facility, but it's only possible because of this incredibly generous community. Kristen Warzoka of the Cleveland Food Bank, Vice President of External Affairs, you and your colleagues are saving lives doing what you do. Well, thank you for all your support, Leon. God blesses you for what you do, too, I will tell you that. Thank you, Kristen, for being on the broadcast. Thank you. Okay. We're going to take a break in just a moment. Coming up, so we'll talk with Patricia Triggs of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. She will have a commentary after these words, especially for you. Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. You know, one of our partners on this broadcast is the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. So we welcome Patricia Triggs. She's president of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland's Guild. Yes. Good to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Oh, good to have you here. What's on your mind today? On my mind is that we're doing, uh, the Urban League Guild is doing a fundraiser in partnership with Cleveland State's Black Studies Department. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a book signing and sale. And mm -hmm. it's going to be happening on Friday, September 14th from 6 until 8 p.m. At Cleveland State At University. At Cleveland State, yeah. yes. And, working, and, people, and this is a fundraiser to, to benefit the Urban League's Guild, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, part of the proceeds uh, from the sale of the books will be going to uh, the Urban League. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. kind of books are on sale? There? Well, this is actually going to be uh, Meet the Author. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have one author coming in. His name is George Davis. And the title of the book is The Melting Points. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be our guest author for the evening. And he will be there. We're having an open reception. And that's going to start at 6 o'clock. That's going to be in the Howard A. Mims uh, Cultural Center there on campus. And then following that, Mr. Davis is going to read from his book, Excerpts, and then he will be available for the book signing thereafter. So Mr. Davis will be reading from his own book, The, the Melting the melting Points. Point. Yes. And he, so it's always good to have the author there signing it. But when the author reads a little bit of what the author has written, yes. it doesn't get any better than that. That's right. And that's it's a right. fundraiser to benefit the Guild of the Urban League as well. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, once yes. again, that's going to be Friday, September mm -hmm. the 14th, in the main classroom plaza, which is the, the Black Studies Department at East 22nd and Euclid, that Cleveland State correct. University. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's from 6 until 8. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reception, there's going to be a reception that's going to start at 6. So and if, then if the Urban that. League puts its stamp on it, it's always a good program. Got to be a good program, Got absolutely. Got to be a good program. <laughs> good to have you on the broadcast with us. Patricia Triggs, president of the Urban League's Guild. Nice Thank to you so be much here. for being on the broadcast. Thank That's you. Going to go for all of us. Gotta go. Be well. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.